Hello and welcome. The Lord is merciful and compassionate. The Lord is very patient and full of faithful love. The Lord is good to everyone and everything. God's compassion extends to all his handiwork. Let us pray. Lord, our guide and guardian, we pray that you will shelter us and lead us as we join together today in worship. May we remember the wonders of your creation each and every day. May we remember that we are a people of your great promise. May we recall your steadfast love that has been revealed to us. May we know that you are with us in all things old and new, and that you are there in every transition. We pray that you help us to face any change with faith and perseverance, because you are with us. May we worship you in spirit and truth this hour, and may we proclaim the love of our Savior that is for all people. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Our reflection today is from Psalm 99. The Lord is king. Let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he, mighty king, lover of justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Extol the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also is among those who called on his name. They cried to the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them in the pillar of cloud. They kept his decrees and the statutes that he gave them. The Lord our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them, but an avenger of their wrongdoings. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain. For the Lord our God is holy. We read the words of the 99th Psalm and we hear about praising God. That the Lord loves justice and is a forgiving God. Do you celebrate God in your daily life? Do you give thanks for God's justice and mercy? How can we demonstrate God's justice in our own lives? How can we share God's love with the people that we meet? How has your life changed because of God? How have you been transformed? And how can we help others to experience the joy of Christ in their lives? If you would pray with me. Oh God, help us to remember that you are for us. That you are there for each and every one of us. May we always celebrate your steadfast love in all the ways that we experience it. May you bless us in your love and your peace so that we may share that love and peace with others. Help us to show Love to each other as a sign of our love for you. May we show the compassion and mercy that has been shown to us through Christ our Lord. As we reach out to you with our joys and our concerns, may you build us up in your mercy and grace. May you lift us up in both laughter and tears that we may always find comfort in you. And may you strengthen us in our celebrations and our sorrows, knowing that you are with us always. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our scripture readings for today come from the New Revised Standard Version Bible. Our first reading for today comes from Matthew 17, verses 1 through 9. Six days Later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became bright as light. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. 
Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will set up three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they raised their eyes, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Our other reading for today is from John, chapter 1, verses 29 through 34. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the chosen one. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And today we come to the main event. We have been building up to this moment for the last four weeks, and I hope that all the background has helped as we explore the transfiguration. We see this transformation happen when Peter, James, and John go up with Jesus to the mountaintop. Before their eyes, Jesus is changed. His entire look has changed. His face is shining like the sun. His clothes are bright like light. A transformed Jesus is there with Moses and Elijah. This is the transfiguration. Transfiguration being a word introduced to the language by the Bible, indicating this kind of drastic change. And what we see here is God's glory shining through in the form of Christ. Jesus' skin is glowing, and we can reference Moses. When Moses had been exposed to God's glory, his skin shone so bright he had to wear a veil over his face. Moses and Elijah are there with Jesus, and we've talked about how Moses represents the law. Moses is the one who is given the law and witnessed God's glory. Moses is here on this mountaintop, representing all of the law culminating in the coming of Jesus. Elijah is there, representing the prophets. Elijah, who had been taken up to return to usher in the age of the Messiah. Elijah is there to show all the prophets fulfilled in the coming of Jesus. Moses and Elijah are there bearing witness to God's glory in Christ. There for Peter, James, and John to bear witness to. And Peter doesn't know what to say. So he suggests that they set up three tents, one for Jesus, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But while Peter is still talking, a cloud overshadows them. A voice comes from the cloud. This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. This isn't the only time we hear something like that. And we have one version in our final connection to the first chapter of John's Gospel. We have John proclaiming that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes the sins of the world away. John says that he saw the Spirit come down from heaven and rest on Jesus. 
and that this signifies that he is the one who will baptize by the Holy Spirit, that he is the chosen one. We hear something like this in all of the gospel accounts. Often using the same language we have in our reading today from Matthew about the beloved son that pleases God. We have been moving through this first chapter of John, hearing all about the word become flesh and the pronouncement from John the Baptist. Each week exploring more about Christ that is revealed in this one moment on the mountaintop. John the Baptist announces that this is the chosen one. And we hear the same thing from the voice in the cloud. The same voice that came in a pillar of cloud to Moses. The disciples hear this voice proclaiming who Jesus is and they are afraid. Now, let's step back for a moment and contemplate Peter, James, and John. Here they are on the mountaintop. And what finally causes them to fear? Jesus has been transfigured. And his skin is shining like the sun and his clothes are bright white. But it's not that. He's standing with who they clearly identify as Moses and Elijah. And that isn't enough to frighten them. They are trying to decide what they should do when Peter suggests they set up tents. But when that voice comes from the clouds, they fall down on the ground, overwhelmed by fear. But why are they afraid? Here's my thoughts on the matter. I don't think the voice terrified them. Not in the way that they might have been afraid of something dangerous or really scary. I think they were in an awestruck fear. It was a fear from not knowing what they were supposed to do. They are already in awe of all the events happening around them. I know I would be. They're trying to make sense of it. They offer to set up tents for them. A sign of hospitality, if nothing else. But when the voice comes from the clouds, making that declaration, they knew they were in God's presence. Something spoken of in Scripture suddenly happening to them. It overwhelmed them. What are they supposed to do? What is the right procedure? I think I might have been right there with them falling on my face. Because that might have been the only thing really that would make sense. It's a pretty solid response given how incredible this scene already is. But then Jesus touches them, tells them not to fear, which seems to be a common refrain. When they raise their eyes, it's just Jesus, back to normal and alone. As they're coming back down the mountain, Jesus tells them, Not to tell anyone about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. And even this statement may have confused them. The disciples were always a little slow to accept what was going to happen. But I think this gave them an eye-opener as to who Jesus is. Because in Matthew's account, it wasn't too long before this that Peter was answering a question about who people were saying Jesus is. When Jesus asks Peter, 
He replies that he thinks he is the son of the living God. Jesus then warns them to say nothing. Then he begins to predict his death. Then here we are six days later. Just a week out from Peter declaring Jesus to be the Christ. Just a week out from Jesus telling them about his death and Peter trying to say it shouldn't happen. Just a week out and they get this revelation and confirmation of Christ. All of these ideas have been brought together for them. God is revealing his love and glory through Christ. God is starting a new chapter in our understanding. Peter, James, and John would know Moses and Elijah. They get their connection in all of this. This declaration of who Jesus is is revealed to them. This transition into a new creation in Christ. And in many ways, Peter, James, and John stand in for us as we witness Christ in our lives. Christ is revealed to us. They bear witness to all of this. And the voice from the cloud doesn't come to confirm anything to Jesus. It is to declare who Jesus is to the disciples. The voice is directed at them. And it is God speaking directly to them. It isn't there for Jesus. It isn't there for Elijah or Moses. They get a fuller understanding now of who Christ is. Peter declared that Jesus was the Messiah, but now has a more complete picture of what that will truly mean. John the Baptist speaks of Jesus as the chosen one who will baptize by the Holy Spirit, and now they have seen the glory revealed themselves. Because now they know that all the law and the prophets are in him. And if the law is in him, then judgment is his. Condemnation is his to withhold or to execute. If the prophets are in him, then the truth is in him. Because he is the culmination of all the prophets, all who spoke for God. He is the one who will speak God's truth most clearly. Elijah and Moses are there bearing witness to Christ. Peter, James, and John are there bearing witness to everything. They are there so that they can reveal the full extent of God's character manifest in Jesus Christ. They have heard the God whose steadfast love and faithfulness had been with his creation from the beginning. The God who chose the Israelites to be his people, a people of promise. The God who led Moses out of Egypt and into the wilderness and led the people to the promised land. That God was here. The God who spoke through the prophets. The God who took Elijah up and bestowed a double portion of that spirit onto Elisha is here. God's love and grace and mercy are on full display because God's glory is here in Jesus. God's voice declares, This is my Son, the Beloved. With Him I am well pleased. Listen to Him. Even if it means listening to Him about keeping silent. Because Jesus asked them to stay silent until after the resurrection. I think it is because Jesus knows that the full understanding will not come until that point. That the full character of God will not be revealed completely until that point. And so, with transfiguration, we celebrate their faithful witness. We celebrate their passing along to us their understanding of the fullness of God's love, 
mercy, and grace manifest in our Savior. And we celebrate all that Christ is for us this very day. As we celebrate the transformation of our hearts and the transformation of our lives in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you'll join with me in our prayer of confession and pardon. God, you are with us even when we turn away from you. Guide us back into your loving arms. Judge us not by the perfection of our actions, but show us mercy and love. We have strayed like lost sheep from your ways, failing both in what we have done and what we have failed to do. Bring us back into your fold that you may guide us and lead us in all things. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us and forgive us. May we walk in your love and trust your ways. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. May the Lord forgive all your sins and lift you up in love through Jesus Christ our Lord. And by the Holy Spirit, keep you in life eternal. Amen. If you are so moved to make an offering, you may send it to the church treasury, you may send it to the church P.O. box. We thank you for all of your continued support at this time and all that you do to help the church continue to do its work here locally and in connection to change the world. Now as God's children reconciled and forgiven, let us pray the way that Christ taught us to pray. As we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now may we go forth, celebrating a God of change, a God of transformation, who touches each and every one of our lives, that we may share in the hope the peace and the joy of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit until we meet again. Amen.